What up, player? If you don't know already, we just launched the new version of Project Go. And in the new Project Go, on top of podcasts, live streaming sessions where you can ask us questions, um, a new user interface and website, we're also going to be responding to your comments every single week in a video just like this one. So anyway, this is going to be like a little preview of what you're going to get at the end of every week in the new Project Go. Yazer asks, great video guys, Kong is a boss as usual. I think I have almost mastered the theory of daytime SP, but just gotta put it into practice. But as someone mentioned above, is it possible to get physical after a daytime date? Have you guys pulled it off? Great job as usual, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it is possible to get physical during the daytime. Getting physical in the daytime and in the nighttime is very, very similar in terms of what steps you take. However, it's different in the sense that in the daytime, you have to be a lot slower. So at night, I can go up to a girl and just grab her arm, hold her hand, and maybe even make out with her right away because it's a high energy environment. They're expecting to have fun. They're there to party. However, in the daytime, if I go to Starbucks and I do that to a girl, I probably get kicked in the nuts. So in a perfect situation, you would meet a girl in the daytime, talk for 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, um, and then take her on a date, maybe to a coffee shop. Sit down, have coffee, talk a little bit more, then go on a walk to a beach that's nearby. While you're walking, you link arms with her. Um, after a while, you hold hands with her. After a while, you guys sit down somewhere, and then you kiss her. Then after that, you go back to her house for dinner, and then you play some Monopoly after that. And by Monopoly, I do mean have hardcore sex. The main point though, is that you have to continue to escalate the interaction and don't be afraid to make the next move when it comes to being physical. So the next question comes from Nemesium44. Um, this is a two part question and it's really long so I'll just summarize it. He can approach a girl but he can't go past like the first 30 seconds because he's too afraid to show his real intentions and he ends up leaving very early. You're taking baby steps right now and I can give you steps on how to take the conversation further. I can give you um, a step-by-step -step strategy on how you can do this and how you can do that. But realistically, what you really need to do is grow some balls and instead of taking baby steps, go all the way up to 150% do something crazy and bring it back down. What do I mean by this? So instead of going up and talking casual conversation with a girl, go up right away and tell her she's gorgeous or she's cute or I like your style. You're probably going up right now saying something like, oh hey, do you know what time it is? Or do you know where the nearest blank is? And then you probably leave. And that's good in terms of you're getting yourself out there, but that's bad in the sense that it's going to take you forever to get laid. All right, so the second question is that he has a French accent and he's embarrassed because he has a communication problem with girls that speak English in his part of the country. So there's two answers I have to this question. The first answer is that French accents are not something to be embarrassed about. French accents are actually very attractive to many, many girls, so you should not be embarrassed about that. Second of all, the bigger problem here is that you're insecure with yourself. Basically, you have to be confident in whatever traits you have or don't have. You know, everybody has something that they're not happy with. Nobody's perfect. For you, it might be your French accent. For somebody else, it might be that they're short. For somebody else, it might be that they're too tall. For somebody else, it might be that they're fat. Now, I know this is a little bit of a generic answer, but the key here is you have to be comfortable in your own skin no matter what you have or don't have. One way that I got rid of my insecurities was I used to go out and tell girls everything about me that I did not like. Like, it was the truth too. So for example, I would go out and I would talk to girls and I would tell them that I was poor. I would tell them that I've only had sex with one or two girls in my life. I've only had one girlfriend. I'm really horrible with women. I'm very unconfident. I'm insecure. And a lot of times, that actually made them like me more because I was honest with them and I was being very blunt about it, which is kind of counterintuitive, but it conveys that you're confident in yourself. And I wouldn't recommend going out and telling girls all of your insecurities. It's a good thing to practice just to get over those insecurities. So next time you go out, try that. You'll see that in the end, if you're comfortable with it, girls won't give a shit either. Kampyong Pagibig asks, could you give some tips as to why we should talk to more girls, even if we don't seem to like them? All right, let me ask you this. Why do biologists, for example, have to study physics? Why do boxers practice running when they don't have to run in a boxing match? Why do musicians have to spend years learning classical music and the songs they don't like? You might not notice it right away, but certain things you do now 
will help you develop the skills you need to succeed in the future at what you want to do. So the reason that you talk to people that you don't seem to like is because you're trying to get good at this. You're trying to get good at not only talking to hot girls, but talking in general. Because when you can talk in general, you can talk to hot girls. And to do this, you need a ton of experience. This means interacting with as many people as possible. I'm gonna give you an example. Last week, I was talking to a girl at a bar for a little bit over an hour. And um, we're about to go back to my place until her friend comes up and starts cock blocking. And this friend was extremely mean and was being a huge bitch to me. Now, I didn't like the friend, but long story short, I was able to handle that situation and take this girl home. Now, how was I able to handle this situation? Because I've spent the last six years not only talking to hot girls, but talking to every type of person imaginable. So, I know how to deal with different situations and different types of people, including mean girls like this one. Another thing you'll find interesting about talking to people that you don't like is a lot of times you'll actually start liking them after you talk to them because they have shields up at first and they might seem like a bitch, but after you win them over, you realize that they're actually pretty cool and you guys get along really well. So that's another plus. Uh, this next question is two questions, I guess. Um, one comes from Alfaro who says, did you make her pay for her cup of coffee or did you pay for it? And he's referring to an old video we put up where um, I took an Australian girl out to a, an instant date for coffee. So in that particular situation, I did pay for her coffee. And the reason for this is because it was only like $3. I think it was like two fifty. She got tea. and I don't really care about $2.50. I'm not gonna be a cheap ass and be like, here, why don't you pay for it? I'm just gonna pay for it because I invited her out and I made her go out of her way to come with me to get coffee. If you think that $3 is a lot or you can't afford it, don't go to a coffee shop. You don't have to get something. I personally like coffee, so I'm always, I always like to go to coffee shops and drink it with a girl. Um, but if you don't like it or you think it's too expensive, go to a park or go to the beach and just sit there and talk. The fact that you're paying for something shouldn't have absolutely no impact on the interaction between you and the girl. Now the second question is from MK4218 and he says, could you give us a more general answer on that? Do you generally pay for dates? Do you make them pay? How many girls walk out on you when you don't pay? So me personally, I always pay for dates just because the first few dates, I'll never take a girl somewhere that's gonna cost me more than $10 total. Jason, on the other hand, loves to go on dinner dates. So it's a little bit more expensive and in that case, he doesn't want to pay all the time, so what he does is when the bill comes, he'll just casually pick it up and he'll say something like, all right, so your portion is gonna be like 750, you could just give me seven, that's cool, and move on to regular conversation after he pays. Now, a funny thing is, if a girl ever invites him out to dinner, then he's under the expectation that she should pay. So what he does is when the check comes, he'll say something like, um, do you wanna get it this time and I'll get it next time? So then he doesn't have to pay and also he's kind of setting up the second date already. And during the second date, he actually does pay for both of them. Basically the answer is you can do whatever you want as long as it's within reason and you're comfortable with the fact that you're doing it. If she sees that it's a normal thing for you, then it will become a normal thing for her in that moment too. Zublar asks, uh, great video guys. This is a little bit unrelated, but what do you guys do after getting a phone number from a girl who has a boyfriend? Uh, how do you bridge the gap to get her to introduce you to all of her single friends? There's two ways that I personally like to do it. One way is I text her, hey, it's Kong, uh, the gay guy you met at blank on this day. Do you and your friends want to go hang out tonight? And the reason that's, that's cool is because she knows I'm not gay because I was hitting on her. And this makes it so that if her boyfriend reads the text, then he'll think, oh, it's a gay guy that she met, so it's cool. So the other way is to just go about it normally. Text her what you would text a regular girl, except don't mention like dates or, or having sex or anything like that, because her boyfriend might see it. Um, so just text her as a friend, but be cool, be chill about it, and eventually invite her and her friends to a party or a bar you're going to. So then you can all meet up, she can introduce you to her friends, you can introduce them to your friends, yada, yada, yada. All right, the next question is from Switch NYC. When girls say they're in a rush, is it a good idea to say, okay, walk with me, and then walk with her in the direction she was walking, or would that re reduce your chances? The answer to that is yes, it's okay to do that. But keep in mind two things. One, when a girl is in a rush, and you're following her, she's probably not 
going to want to talk to you that much anyway, so you're kind of forcing the conversation on her. Two, when you're walking, it's a lot less intimate because you're not making eye contact, you guys aren't facing each other, the body language isn't there, um, she can't see your facial expressions, you can't see hers. So it, it, it makes it a lot harder to connect with somebody, and therefore it's a lot harder to see them later after you get her phone number, if you even do. So to answer your question, yes, it's okay to do that, but I would only do that if there's like no other girls around and this is like your only option. All right, now if you haven't already, uh, you can subscribe to the new Project Go at go.simplepickup.com. We're actually releasing this to the public in about one or two months at the price of $10 for the videos only, which you currently have right now at $5, and the whole package for $30. So for the current Project Go members, we're going to give you a discount of 50% because this is in the beta version right now. We want to get your feedback on how we're doing. We want you to tell us what you like, what you don't like, um, and help us improve it for when we do release it to the public. Also, if you subscribe to the new Project Go within the first two weeks, you'll also get a bonus video of Jason pulling a girl home after only 15 minutes of meeting her. So if you're interested, go to go.simplepickup.com, buy the new Project Go, get on that shit as soon as you can, and once you're in that subscription service for $15, you will always have it at $15 for as long as we do Project Go. All right, so that's it for this week. Hopefully, I will see you on the new Project Go.